here, we're checking out some micro OLEDs. Hi. Hi there, my name is Bruce Elliott with SIDTECH. Welcome to our booth. So at SIDTECH, what you're going to see here is micro OLED product. So this would be OLED cells on a silicon wafer. So you're looking at some of the newer products. These are 0.23 inch. So a very, very small display. People would say, why do I want to display that small when my iPhone screens are bigger and bigger? Well, these are used in a different type of method. They're used in projection systems, vision systems on cameras, and most importantly now, we are using them for things like AR and VR. So that is the future of these, these type of displays. And that's why- Where is why, this, uh, where's the company? So SIDTECH is uh, based in, uh, in Wuhu City, China, so it's uh, several hours west of Shanghai. So SIDTECH has been around since uh, the first line was built in 2020. They're manufacturing micro OLED products on an 8-inch wafer fab, and SIDTECH is currently under construction now for a 12-inch fab, which will be open by mid this year, where they will now move into the high-volume arena for leading-edge products like AR and VR products. When, when I see this, uh, uh, this beautiful wafer right here, yes. um, Um, how do how do you fit this? It looks smaller than what you have here. Well, these back lanes are different. So this is a uh, about a 0.4, 0.5, we'll round it up, 0.5 inch wafer. These are 1.03 inch. So of course, the bigger that wafer is, uh, the less you fit on the on the substrate. Is it a 4K? Uh, that can be 4K. Yes, can they're be. all different resolutions. So if you look at a roadmap. You'll see the new generation products that are AR and VR are usually 4K. That's going to be the minimum resolution. And the big battle right now is trying to get higher brightness is really what is needed. So the Apple Vision Pro product will really bring micro OLED to the forefront. Uh, a lot of people will be learning about micro OLED when that product's released here in the next few months. And then we look forward to all the other major manufacturers making a type of a spatial computing device or an augmented uh, or virtual reality device. This market is going to explode. Glasses. It's, it absolutely should explode. Everybody so, in CS wants to make products like this, right? Now, exactly. Right? And so these are these are large fabs. So these are not easy to get into. And that's why you see companies like uh, Sony, who's involved in this. You see BOE involved in this. You see Samsung involved in this recently. Uh, BOE is recent too. Um, SIDTECH has been around for several years making products and maybe one other Chinese company. So everyone in is going to be full. And then there's micro LED is also Micro LED, stuff. different technology. So yeah. it's LED based, not OLED based. Uh, it's got benefits, but it's still very expensive to manufacture. So uh, Apple picked uh, micro OLED for a reason. So that's why we see that uh, becoming a So here I see a pretty high resolution. resolution, huh? Yeah, there'd be a 4K. So this would be something very similar to what would be in an Apple Vision Pro. What does the Apple Vision Pro use exactly? Um, I'm joking, but is it something like this kind of size? It is very close. Very I'll say close. it's a little bit larger is what I can say. And, so uh, resolution about the same. Uh, you, you, you do want to get something like that to have uh, a kind of like, I, I guess Apple has been waiting six years or whatever to get the right technology ready Correct. before they wanted to launch. Correct. So the technology is reaching a, a level now well, hopefully people are going to say, oh my God, this is really great. That is the intent. It, right? So Apple is a very smart company, of course. They have been waiting for the technology to develop. Uh, the technology has been around for a while. Companies like Imagine, who Samsung has purchased, they've been around for a while, but it's really not a mass market product. It was only like fighter jets and stuff like it's, that? It's, it's usually space. military base and heads up displays for military. So now with Apple coming out, we're going to see this thing really go to a commercialization phase. And it's already started in China. If you go to the China market right now, you can see products like this all over in the market. So this would be an augmented reality product. So right now there is a, the 0.23 inch screen, that first one that you saw from over there. There's two of them inside of here, and you have a full heads up display when you put these glasses on. So as I'm talking to you, I can see my desktop, I can be getting different images on the side of me, and I can get in feed, feedback and input from the outside world. Right, so what's one going side on? only, right? No, it's uh, right both. dead center. So this is projecting on both of them, but it's still allowing pass-through, so I can see you clearly, but at the same time, I can see my desktop What's the name of those, these guys? This would be, a, this is a hardware company in China that would be able to use uh, an OLED product, or micro OLED product from SIDTECH. So again, SIDTECH, currently is not making the full hardware. It's just like a Samsung. Yeah. Samsung's making screens. And those TV exhibitors screens. might be somewhere here. These exhibitors may be here somewhere, yes. Right. And uh, uh, like the combination of the display supplier, the product designer, 
uh, the software and everything, and boom, uh, any kind of brand can start launching alternatives to the Apple Vision Pro, but for maybe a little bit lower price. Let's say is most that likely. A, you know, that Apple. Be nice? Because Apple will uh, launch 3, at a high tier. Three thousand five hundred is a little bit expensive. It is, uh, but it's Apple. Apple's going to launch a high tier, and they're going to build the market. So Apple's device that's a spatial computing product, and it's really going to redefine the whole marketplace for what goes on. So again, when I put these on, what I can do now is I can replace my cell phone. I don't need my cell phone screen anymore. I can get my text messages. I can see videos. I can be getting my flight information. Everything is here in front of me without pulling out my phone. Uh, we'll get, you know, Apple Vision Pro will have your finger gestures. Uh, other companies are doing very similar, where now I can be manipulating the screen and the contents based upon, uh, you know, what I need to do. So it's really a, a changing point in the market now uh, with their product coming out. In the Chinese market, again, there's a lot of products similar to this. They're not a high tier like an Apple Vision Pro, but they're definitely getting the technology out there. And they're allowing SidTech to get our manufacturing base up and running so that we can make a very cost competitive product. Apple chose to do kind of like a VR headset because uh, you're not really having transparency in the front. It's a fake transparency, right? They have fake eyes and stuff that they show. Uh, you don't, you just look through cameras. Right. Uh, what but we, you could yeah. design that way or the other way? What we call Apple's product is a mixed reality, so MR. So it's a combination. So you can actually blink out the world around you, or you can have it be the, the pass-through. So this, of course, is the one of the end goals of the AR technology, where you have a pair of glasses, which people don't even know there are different pair of glasses, but you have all that information available to you. So currently, today, a few things that are lacking, you know, there's still horsepower needed to drive this. That's got to catch up. Batteries have to catch up. Uh, the brightness of this displays have to catch up. So I can use this fine inside right now, but if I go outside in the sun, it could be limited. That's, so why, they that the, that's be, why they close you into the VR world. They do. But th there, with transparency, uh, you, you lose the brightness because of all the reflections and everything. That's, part of, it. that's part of it. The, but in the end, we don't want to be walking around a world where people just have things blanked in front of their face. You know, it's a lot easier to envision a world where, you know, a person's glasses, we don't know if they're regular glasses, they're v AR glasses, they can be anything. And that's where you get the whole world around you where your TV screen can look like it's a 100 in inch diagonal in front of you. So a lot of huge possibilities with this technology. What is the SLCF? So that's a special technology uh, that SidTech has where we are able to remove one or two of the color filters to give you a higher brightness product. So these examples you're looking at now, the 0.23 inch, are using the SLCF technology. And uh, again, the goal, the goal in doing that is to get higher brightness. is is really the end goal. So these are 0.39 inch. So these right now are being used in a uh, firefighter type of applications where it's an infrared camera. So firefighters can go into a building and they can see, uh, you know, in a smoky room, they can see images and objects around them. So uh, other, other applications are possible beyond AR and VR. Camera viewfinders are another very common one. Yeah, that's the, like the biggest market for micro displays, isn't it? it the viewfinder and the camera? Presently, yes, that's where it has yeah. been historically. And uh, specialty HUD type of screens. But now, again, with the Apple Vision Pro, products like this that are available in China, the whole market is changing very rapidly. How about the projector? Is it bright enough to do a projector? Well, projector would be a little bit different system. So when you're looking at a projection system, a micro OLED probably would not be the ideal technology for displays to be using on Maybe that. Maybe the micro LEDs could do that. They, they could, they can do it every one. So for the most part, uh, an AR application, you are projecting an image onto the glass. So you know it's a it's a smaller size. So there's nothing to say you couldn't go to a, a very large screen. It just would be you would be needing to take that light and enhance it through an external display or external light source rather. All right. Uh, can you talk about uh, Citex market right now? Is how big? Uh, how how old? What's the company history and how how many people are using these around the world? So Sidtech, a uh, China-based company. So uh, its origin in manufacturing, it's, it's been around for several years. Again, it started as an eight inch fab and uh, that products are shipping now to domestic China markets. In the next year or two is where Sidtech is looking to really expand beyond the domestic markets. And that's going to be achieved based on the new 12 inch wafer fab, which is launching in the next couple quarters. 
Uh, and what's going to be your brightness? So brightness targets, uh, you know, right now achieving on a new 12-inch fab, we'd be at about 5,000 nits minimum. We want to get up to 10,000 and beyond. So we have a roadmap that shows steps all the way up to uh, some pretty good brightness values. What is, so, uh, what is the Sony display in the Apple Vision Pro brightness? Uh, that one would be right at 5,000 nits. All right. So, so I've heard. Maybe. Right. All right. It's hard to do a teardown, right, right now? Correct. Correct. There's not much to tear down for another couple months. It's coming soon, right? Coming they're trying soon. to uh, they're trying to a little bit disrupt the CES. The the Apple just came out and said, "Hey, uh, here's a couple. Here's troll. a couple of units. I've I've seen. I saw one at least today walking around. Oh, really? So it is did here. You, yes. Did you try it? No, it was a person, and uh, I wasn't able to approach that person. All right. So uh, three thousand five hundred. It's uh, Apple kind of money. I want to see. Okay, maybe I, I, I don't have to say three hundred fifty, but something like seven hundred, one thousand, or something like that for something that's great and maybe even kills Apple. That'd be great. Like yeah. in terms of how great it, uh, the product is. It, maybe it will happen. So there's a few things. So again, Apple is the first one to market. So they are paying a premium for their display technology and the other technologies. There's a lot of brand new technologies in there. But uh, there's no reason to say that for a product like this, that the price gets down more to like a, uh, you know, a meta type of device. Absolutely. Yeah. So that would be, you know, for mass market adoption, that's really what you want. When if you want every person to be having one, you know, I think even a thousand dollars is still good. Cell phones are a thousand dollars; people pay that. So, we'll see. the The price will depend upon how the technology evolves that goes inside. If the technology is evolving, that's a good sign. That means the economies of scale there are there, and we'll be able to achieve really good pricing. So, uh, 12 years ago, Sergey Brin was walking around the CES, and he tried on my golden eye micro LCD display and then he said it's going to be big and they did but hopefully somebody like Google comes in and makes a nice platform that everybody can use that's not Apple for this kind of application and that gets really big traction. But Absolutely. if they don't do it then somebody needs to wake up elsewhere and somehow do Android based something that everybody can use that's really working yeah, well. Yeah, the, uh, there will be a special Apple OS for their Vision Pro. And you can uh, be rest assured that Android will have a very similar OS in the future. That everybody can collaborate on this OS yes. and all the software works on this OS and yes. stuff like that. Yes. All right.